We're coming at you from Barcelona for Mobile World Congress, and MWC is your show powered by flagships, and we've got one right here for you. It actually is the one, the HTC One M9. Uh, you'd be forgiven for thinking there isn't a whole lot new about this guy, and that's because HTC doesn't think much needed to be fixed in the first place. Uh, in terms of industrial design, very close to identical to what we saw with the HTC One M8. We've got a squared off camera in the back and that's a 20 megapixel camera instead of the four ultra pixel camera we had last time. That was a bit of an odd decision. HTC has been trying to prove to us that ultra pixel has been a good idea for a while now. And now that they switched over into the Sony source 20 megapixel camera, we're discovering that it's actually not that great. We went on a group outing to the Sagrada Familia and just about every photo we took on the M9 versus the M8 came out looking better on the M8. So hopefully that's just something that can be fixed by software. This is running a non-final build, but we'll see about that. Turning to the front, again, we're looking at some really similar design elements. We've got the two boom sound speakers. We do have the ultra pixel camera up front. They didn't get rid of it completely. They decided, you know, the wide angle functionality, really great for selfies, and we actually kind of prefer it over the back camera. So in terms of raw quality, the M8 actually winds up being a little bit better. The M9 isn't a slouch though, and it excels at a lot of new photo effects that might add some levity and some I don't know, panache to your photos that might not look as good as ones you've taken in the past. The other thing you'll note is we've got HTC Sense going here and it doesn't really look like any version of Sense we've seen before. That's for two reasons. One, we're looking at HTC Sense 7, which is their updated version of a custom UI. Uh, it's very fast and very fluid and that's helped a lot by the fact that we've got a Snapdragon 810 in there. That's an octa-core processor uh, that supports 64-bit applications, but we'll get to that later. The other reason this might not look like the sense that we're used to is because I've themed it. Uh, you can create in Sense 7 your own custom themes. You can pull them, you can pull color schemes from photos that you've taken, or you can just dive in and choose fonts that you like, choose wallpapers you like, choose widgets and visual styles that you actually like. And it can be a bit tricky. I've seen a couple already just in our briefing room that look a bit like MySpace exploded in like 2005. But there are quite a few preloaded ones and they do look really quite nice. This is a red one that I'm really fond of that does have a circular icon theme and I think it looks great. HTC's philosophy this time around has really just been little touches and reacting to people's complaints. The camera was a complaint, they fixed it, but not really. Uh, another issue with the M8, it was a bit slippery because it was almost sort of a river rock design where you've got rounded edges all the way through. There wasn't really anything for your fingers to get caught up on. That's not the case here. We do have a bit of a lip. Our review unit is a two-tone model with a, a silver and rose gold finish, which looks great, but you've got this lip here which ostensibly helps you hold on to the phone, but it does feel a bit odd. It feels like a step backwards from the industrial design we saw last time. Uh, in addition, we do have what's called the suggested uh, apps folder. That's part of HTC's uh, Sense Home widget. Uh, basically, the widget in a nutshell provides you suggested applications that you've already installed, whether you're at home or you're at work or you're sleeping or whatever. So you've got options and it tries to figure out what you use and when to provide you with the tools you need when you need them. As I mentioned before, this thing does run like a dream. Uh, that again owes to the Snapdragon 810 processor and it's three gigabytes of RAM taking away inside. It's actually a lot smoother than the Snapdragon 810 performance that we saw in the LG G Flex 2. Uh, scrolling through web pages, firing up apps, flipping in and out of blink feed and scrolling through all of that content has been buttery and beautiful so far. Blink feed is much the same as we've seen in the past, but it does sort of extend into the lock screen as well. And it does that by trying to surface relevant and contextual information depending on where you are. Uh, it's not gonna show us anything right now because we're standing still. But if the feature was active, it would give us suggestions depending on your location and the time of day. So if it's noon and we're walking around in beautiful Barcelona as we will be in days to come, it might suggest restaurants for us to try out based on stuff that we've liked in the past. We're not entirely sure how that feature is gonna work just yet. We'll tell you more once we see it in action, but conceptually it's cool. HTC has been trying to take a much smarter and in a lot of ways paired back approach to software as well. And it's surprising to see that most of the really substantive improvements we're seeing in the One M9 is in the software. The design hasn't changed. The hardware, the internals, they're the leap forward that you would have expected. But the software is really where this thing seems to shine. Cowabunda! Nom 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 nom! <laughs> Nom, nom, oh, cool. nom, nom, nom. Mm. So, interview over? Uh, no. <laughs>